First of all, I want to thank organizers for inviting me to participate in this webinar where we are coming out the position statement on dermatologic ultrasound that we all hope they are going to be very useful when applied to the daily practice. I am going to focus on inflammatory skin disease. Inflammation of the skin and appendages is usually identified by clinical visual examination, palpation and dermoscopy, especially in epidermal and superficial dermal disorders. Deeper processes characterized by nodules, as the image, involving reticular dermis and subcutaneous tissue are more difficult to evaluate. It is very useful to rely on other complementary tools as ultrasound for a better patient assessment and staging. Sonography will give us additional information that helps in the diagnosis and therapeutic approach. Fortunately, we have improved the way of doing ultrasound in the last few years. The skin inflammation is mainly characterized by vasodilation, vasodilation, increased cellular infiltrates, and modification of normal structures. There are common shared ultrasound findings in inflammatory skin disorders. Hypocogenic areas in the subepidermal portion of the dermis and around follicles, hypocogenic septa and hyperechoic fatty lobules when the subcutaneous tissue is affected, and of course, increased local blood flow identified by Toppler. Here we may see the differences between normal skin and an example of an inflammatory skin disorder as a pancreatic paniculitis. Disorganization of normal structures, hypoechogenic dermal areas, hypoechoic septa, and hyperechoic fatty lobules. We have to determine with sonography the level and extent of the changes in inflammatory disorders of the skin, hair, and nails. And of course, it's very important that we must compare with areas of non-affected normal skin. In summary, with position statement of experts was that with skin and appendage inflammatory diseases, the level and extent of inflammation should be assessed and reported as it may influence treatment. There was a broad agreement. In which of all inflammatory skin diseases sonography is especially indicated? We think that the most important are skin infection, psoriasis, hydrogenitis suppurativa, scleroderma, morphea complex. We we'll begin with skin infection. In viral wards, ultrasound can be used to assess the extent of plantar warts and to monitor treatment X response. In respect of arthritis, ultrasound assessment of arthritis has also become widespread in emergency departments in some countries, especially in children. It is performed with minimal point of care training. Sonography studies may alter the treatment strategy, drainage versus no drainage, in 15% of cases that had been evaluated by physical examination alone. So our position statement is that ultrasound is useful in evaluating and detecting subclinical subcutaneous arthritis in the emergency department. We want to point out that ultrasound equipment and trained professionals are recommended for this type of evaluation. We come to a broad agreement. About psoriasis, ultrasound psoriasis features have been widely studied. It is characterized by epidermal and dermal thickening, subepidermal hypoechoic areas, and increased blood flow on color doppler. These findings, especially dermal thickness, have been found to correlate with disease severity measure using the psoriasis area severity index, PASI, and other scores assessing the severity or extent of disease. In respect of nail psoriasis, psoriatic nails appear thicker with early loosening of the trilaminal appearance, 
beginning on the ventral aspect of the nail plate compared with healthy nails or nails affected by other diseases like uh, atopic dermatitis or onychomycosis. Nail disease in psoriasis has been also correlated with the presence of encesopathy and psoriatic arthritis, even in the absence of clinical signs. In summary, in patients with suspected psoriatic arthritis, ultrasound findings of psoriatic onychopathy can support diagnosis of psoriasis. There was an unanimous agreement, 9 of 9. The next disorder I am going to talk is hydrodenitis suppurativa. HS inflammation is especially located in derma and subcutaneous tissue and can be assessed in detail by ultrasound. US has demonstrated better staging HS patients than clinical inspection alone, and sometimes abstaging of patients is a consequence of identifying occult and deep fistulous tracts. The most common lesions are nodule, abscess, and fistulous tract. Again, there was a unanimous agreement. Ultrasound is recommended for supporting diagnosis, staging, and treatment monitoring in hydrodenitis suppurativa treatment. The last disorder I'm going to talk is about scleroderma morphea. Scleroderma is the cholagenosis most widely studied by ultrasound, as treatment varies according to the stage of disease, inflammatory in early stage or sclerotic in later stages. We usually found thickening of the dermis and absence of abnexal structures, and also decreased blood flow. In a study of uh, more than 100 morphea plaques in 59 patients, Ultrasound had a sensitivity of 100% and a specificity of 98%, differentiating between the inflammatory and the sclerotic phases. We conclude that ultrasound is recommended for supporting diagnosis, assessment of activity and follow-up in scleroderma morphea patients. We reach a broad agreement. Thank you very much for your attention.